Welcome everybody. My name is Keith Williams. I'm the CEO of Sankofa Capital. We're a real estate development firm uh, focused currently on building affordable housing in Ghana. Um, I'm here at Alpha, who's going to introduce himself. Hi everyone. My name is Alpha Kamara, originally from Sierra Leone. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, United States. I'm here with my good friend, um, Keith. Uh, we just uh, visited Sierra Leone, so we're going to chat a little bit getting to learn about his experience so um i will start with kids um what's what were you thinking before going and then when you go in and then when you get there what's um what's your did that meet your expectation at first? yeah well i mean initially um the trip was completely about you know getting citizenship excuse me getting citizenship in Sierra Leone. Um, as many of you guys know, uh, Sierra Leone is offering citizenship directly to the diaspora. Um, if you take an African ancestry test and you have ancestry from one of the 12 tribes, you're already put into contention to get citizenship. Um, they do their program every November and every April. I just took part in the November program uh, with Dinah Samir, uh, who runs a company called Donfo. That's his tour agency. So before I went, I mean, honestly, completely, I was just focused on like, you know, get to Sierra Leone, get this passport, uh, be able to be more mobile, moving around West Africa, obviously with the Equus passport. Um, the only thing I kind of really thought about Sierra Leone before I went was the fact that I heard they had amazing beaches from, from people I had talked to in the internet. Um, I heard the food was great. And I heard that there was a lot of opportunity as far as real estate development and finance, which is you know what I do. Um, now, of course, I can really be long-winded with how I felt when I got there, but what I can tell you is the beaches are completely amazing. Um, some of the stuff I've seen was stuff you would see out of a movie. And I'm not being hyperbolic, I'm not exaggerating. It was some of the cleanest, uh, most amazing beaches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the food was great, and there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, so that, that's that's for a start. I don't want to kind of dive that's into it. Good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, great. Uh, that's great. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, can you go through the process, um, the uh, the naturalization process? Can you go through it? Explain it to us exactly. Walk us through. Yeah. Yes, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you, you take an African ancestry DNA test, and if it comes back, one of the 12 tribes, <clears throat> Sierra Leone, mine came back Mende. Um, then from there, you just have to contact a certified tour operator in Sierra Leone. There's many of them. Again, I went with, with Dinah Samir, who runs Donfo. Uh, pretty much before you go and, and get into the country, you have to submit documentation. You got to submit a criminal background report, birth certificate, um, everything you would imagine that you would have to submit to a country to be naturalized in. Um, once they accept that paperwork, you come in the country for two weeks, you do a program, you sightsee, uh, you go to like a business workshop to learn how things are in the country. And then you, you, you meet with the president, he hands you a passport, you're a citizen. It's that simple. No, that's simple. Okay. Uh, so um, in a ballpark figure, figure, what you say, um, estimate the cost of all the, the old process? Yeah. I mean, tour oper different tour operators have different pricing. I can say you're going to pay anywhere from 4000 to 5000 all in. And what I mean all in, that's the, that's the fees. And that's also encompasses, you know, having to spend the money because you're going to want to you know, buy things. Uh, on the trip but everything's included you know your stay your hotel etc accommodation okay four thousand yeah. five yeah, okay okay uh, wait, uh, so how long was the process um it, it was so i started the process back in back in july and that's when i started to make my payments and, and submit my documentation to, to the tour operator i went with who was donfo um so i would say collectively it took about six months from beginning to end and then the tour itself was was two weeks um on the ground and we we had a 
really amazing trip. I mean, we had a chance to stay in the Radisson Blue, um, which is one of the, the better hotels in Sierra Leone. Um, and it's in a prime area where you can just kind of walk out and there, there's restaurants, casinos, if you gamble, I don't gamble, but uh, restaurants, clubs, um, everything you can imagine that you would need access to is, is all in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. So did, did you have the chance uh, to visit outside Freetown? Let me see. And let's... I did. I did. I did. I actually had a chance to go to uh, Bo. Bo. Um, yeah, so we went there to meet the uh, the Mende tribe. <clears throat> so that was that was a whole event onto itself. I mean, literally, we drove out. Once our bus pulled up, um, it was you know, tons of people outside celebrating, welcoming welcoming us. We had a chance to meet the chief, um, who welcomed us as well, um, gave us names, uh, you know, Mende names, and it, it it was really a good experience to be out there with the people on the tour and, and to get the chance to meet new people along the way yeah okay uh, let me just touch on that a uh, bo, bo town is uh the second yeah. largest town or city in sierra leone behind freetown the capital city and that's where you can find so you can find the mendy um tribe which might ethnic group which might be the largest ethnic group um in sierra leone and he's talking about the chief, the chief, the paramount chief is typically the head of the, like here, I know we have the mayor or whatever, the mayor is there, but it's like traditional head um, of the town. That's what he refers to as the, the chief. Um, but, so how long did you guys stay over in Bota? We stayed for, um, well, it was a long drive to begin with, but we stayed there for, I wanna say, maybe four hours collectively wow. so we spent some time um and i'm not sure where we were <laughs> but oh, but we spent some time in, in the main village um where we met the chief and then from there we went to a school um a, a local school and they put on like a a little event for us and, and we had food and um you know that was great to, to get a chance to be around the kids and, and, and just see kind of how their day is when it comes to school and, and uh you know, what life is like for them. Uh, was it primary school or a secondary school? It was a primary. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. because uh, Bow Town, that's where you have one of the most prominent uh, secondary school, we call it Bow School. Um, okay. Historically, back in the days, that's where permanent chief and permanent secretary kids will go to. So that's a historic place. Even the president now, he went to Bow School. So uh, I thought okay. maybe you guys went to, <laughs> they took you guys to uh -huh. Bow School. But, it was found in 19, I think 1906 or 1905, something around, yeah, historically. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So many, yeah. So, um, and then you guys get back to Freetown. Um, you, I saw earlier you talked about business opportunities. So what are the opportunities yeah. that you saw, um, that really uh, spark out of your eyes, you, you get, you landed over there? You know, it, it's, there is. I mean, I think people use the word opportunity really loosely nowadays. They just kind of throw it around. I mean, when I say the opportunities are endless, they're endless. I mean, just in agriculture alone, I mean, there there is just wide open space uh, for agriculture. And we know that Sierra Leone imports a lot of their products. So, I mean, there's opportunity to kind of do things locally from, from agriculture to uh, produce, um, real estate, construction, finance. Uh, that's where I'm seeing most of the opportunities that apply to me is in finance and real estate. Um, obviously, one of my partners that I work with, Joel Max, um, has exposure in Sierra Leone, uh, specifically in a town called Waterloo. So we'll be working together um, to do some projects there as well in conjunction to what we're doing in, in Ghana. Um, but I mean, what really entices me the most is just the real estate opportunities that lie in river number two now that is a premier destination and, and for you guys that have never been there it is it is really something out of a movie i mean i i, I can't even really explain to you what it's like to be there but i mean just imagine like a beautiful beach white sands 
mountains all around you, almost like a 360, homes on the hill, um, just a natural lagoon kind of going through, and um, just a very vibrant destination. Um, and I, I enjoyed that probably the most out of anything I've done or I did while I was in Sierra Leone. Yeah. Now, when you, you talk about that, yeah, um, I know I know you do have some pictures, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I yeah. do. I do. Um, did, did you put it on your social media? Um, I, I am like, I am an anti-social media person. I don't do anything because online. Because I just said you should have put it there, <laughs> then you put a link, people will check it out and see exactly yeah. what you see. Okay. Yeah, you, I, you'll I'm see still like you. I'm not a big uh, social media person either. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see a link at the bottom of the video, but uh, or maybe I'll okay. put some stuff on, on LinkedIn. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I took a ton of pictures, uh, and I, I wish I had property in that location. I, I wish. So yeah, it, it's, it, um, it's not late yet, but uh, but the thing about it, those those A are very pricey. That's 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 the other thing again. They are. They are. Yeah, they are very they are. very pricey. So I know you've talked about, um, we can go on and on and talk about all the great experience. So yeah. what can you say to someone uh, who is planning to go out there to do the same thing or business or something like that? What are they should be mindful of? Say, okay, maybe this might be uh, uh, something they should prepare for, not on the good side, but maybe some obstacle along the way or something. Um, Which you experience? I mean, the one thing I can say, and I'll start with good stuff, right? Most majority of my experience was was great. Yeah, looks, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, the people are really warm. Um, they're really receptive. Um, uh, they're really decent people to interact with and, and, and learn from and trustworthy people. Um, so I would say probably the best asset that I've seen is just the people on the ground um, that I interacted with. Uh, now, I've been in and around the continent, many different countries. Uh, now, of course, you know, the infrastructure is not as great as, as say, Ghana, um, but that presents room for opportunity, you know, for anyone that wants to come in and, and you know, build that infrastructure, whether it be roads, uh, whether it be real estate, whether it be, you know, bringing in a business. I think even in trade, I mean, there's, there's, there's tons of opportunity there when you realize that, the majority of products that are imported into the country come from obviously other places. And uh, so if I was a business person coming into Sierra Leone, I would keep an open mind, um, not try to stay in your wheelhouse too much and kind of try to expand and look for opportunities just kind of to touch on that some more. Um, me and a, and a group of, of some of the guys that were on the trip, you know, we're thinking about, um, establishing a business in Sierra Leone. We're kind of working through the kinks. Um, I'm not going to say what that business is yet, just so we can keep our competitive advantage. But, uh, you know, we hope to go live with our company uh, within Q3, Q4, uh, fiscal year 23, um, just based on our observations of uh, some of the opportunities in, in the transport uh, sector. Oh, the transportation set. Okay. okay. Yes. That's that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. So when are you planning to visit again? I know you guys are uh, working on something Q3, Q4. When are you, I don't when are you know. planning to visit? Yeah, so for me, my focus, <clears throat> my focus right now is is the development I'm working on in partnership with Joe Max between my company, St. Kofi Capital. And yeah. Joe Max, who's a, also a builder in West Africa. So that's going to take up a lot of my time next year. I'm just breaking ground on that project, um, monitoring that construction project, dealing with customers. So, but to answer your question, uh, probably around August, September is when I'll go back to Sierra Leone. So, yeah. And yeah, talking about Joe Max, did you, um, did you visit the site or? At the is it Newton? You have a place of a Newton along the Waterloo area. Yeah. Newton, yeah, what and Waterloo. Yeah, Waterloo is is, yeah. is the area. Yeah. So yeah, I had a chance to visit the site and uh I mean the homes look great. Um it's it's a really 
uh, good product that they build uh, there in, in Waterloo. And uh, we hope to, you know, in partnership, continue to do that. Uh, we're trying to figure out as, as companies kind of what our angle is going to be and, and working together in Sierra Leone. Um, my eyes are kind of set on the beaches. Um, maybe not river number two, but the beaches in and around uh, river number two seem to be ideal. Right? Yeah. River number two, you have places like Hamilton Beach. It's a good one too. Bure Beach is another good one too. Even uh, Toke Beach. It's a great okay. one. And um, I think Tombo area, the beach around Tombo, is a good one too. It's a yeah, good area. I had a chance to visit uh, Tuke and Tombo. Uh, but yeah. 2K, I mean, it was, I, I had fish, like fish, rice, and some tomato sauce. I'm not sure what it's formally called, okay. but it was good, right? It was good. And it was probably the freshest fish I've ever had in my life. They literally caught it, brought it in, cooked it, yeah. and I ate it, like, <laughs> you know, in a matter of five minutes, you know, uh, yeah. when I'm pulling so, it out the um, water. So. so can you please tell us about your favorite dish? Oh, man, that that's. Yeah. yeah. And my Ghanaian family and friends are gonna are gonna hate me uh, for this. But I think Sierra Leone, in my opinion, is so far is my favorite place to eat on the continent. I think they got the best food. Um, cassava leaf alone, I would pick that dish over any African dish you can name. That's just my opinion. I know I might get some flack up behind that, but <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that, uh, so cassava leaf. Uh, cream cream, potato leaf, like all vegetable dishes are just good. It's good. Good, good, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, did you ever, uh, did you try some coconuts over there? Yeah, they, uh, they get it for you up the tree and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, did. <laughs> yeah I was in the market. I was in the market in Freetown. Uh, I forget what yeah. market, but we were, we were in the market and. Uh, People were, were giving out the coconuts and, and they were good, you know, just just good hydration and yeah, yeah definitely good, good experience all, all the way around. I mean, the only I kind of want to go back to something. Okay, yeah, go ahead. If, if you were coming into Sierra Leone, the only thing I would say to be prepared for is to make sure you got your airport fees to get in and get out of the airport. <laughs> That's what I was with. <laughs> yeah. That's my that, that, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak on it too too bad, but uh you, you want to make sure you got your 25 dollars when you come in and when you leave. Because if you don't, you will be stuck. Um I actually seen a a, a football team that got stuck in the in the airport because they didn't have their their, their money to get out. So yeah. 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 Unfortunately, it's 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 not the government, it's it's just people over there who, who are walking over there. It's it, it's sad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah yeah almost but just guys that. just uh, prepare um when you go in make sure you prepare for things like that uh yeah um so with, with yeah yeah for me the coconut the one i love with the coconut stuff is when you're at the beach area get it off give you the water you drink it from the coconut of itself and then you can eat the especially the jelly the softer oh, one yeah yeah I've had that. It's, it's amazing okay. man it's just did, did you try the palm wine i did i did it was good it wasn't the one i had wasn't so fresh and i okay. prefer it fresh um, you need to... but it was more like fermented where it sat out for a little bit which so, some people like it. so where did you try it Ooh, it was going towards uh i, I want to say it was in waterloo what Typically, that's where they get the best one around that Waterloo area. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's uh, the palm wine is it is a drink from the tree. They tap it from the tree and then you drink it. It's it's good. It's good. Yeah, I mean the one we had, you know, was more fermented, so it was more, I guess, um, had more alcohol in it, if you will. I'm not oh, much yeah, of a drinker. Right. Okay, well, for the alcohol drinkers. <laughs> 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 if you had, yeah, that's okay. So I didn't know that. That's now uh, now you know where you 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 <laughs> you're not feeling it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it it tastes good. I, I can tastes, say that. It tastes yeah. good. 
you know when you get a um, taste of that maybe you don't want all of those other local drinks all those other drinks around the beer what it's really good people love it it's uh it's natural for me, you know yeah which uh, yeah, and, I, and, and for me i, I just want to encourage like other black americans like myself that might be interested in you know investing in another part of the world or, or you know looking for opportunities i think not only can you connect um you know with the people on the ground but i mean th th these places are wide open and ripe for investment and i think we should be um seeking those opportunities and one way to do that is you know through uh getting a second passport yeah. and uh yeah i got that in sierra leone and i, I feel great about it uh yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't change it yeah so uh, yeah i um you you touch a little bit uh you guys are interested in making um pushing making something on that and um, transportation how was transportation back there so it um it was it was it's different from what i've seen um <clears throat> they have a lot of what they call it hopefully i'm saying this right kk's KK. like the, the little like little mini you know trikes uh yeah so a lot of the transportation is kind of done that way and through motorcycles mm -hmm. and there's you know buses as well but of course, I think there's a need for more, um, you know, trans steady transportation. Um, I think one of the biggest issues that needs to be worked out is I know they the, the country's been having issues with the importation of gasoline, and that's been causing uh, you know, delays and, and refilling in people's tanks, and and you know, so th that's that's an issue that needs to be worked out. But overall, transportation sector is wide open, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So what about the traffic? How was the traffic? Um, it, it, standard, standard, you know, traffic that I've seen across West Africa. Um, it was moderate. I, I've seen worse. Uh, it was moderate. Okay. At least it was moderate. Yeah, okay. as long as you're traveling during the right time of the day, you, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. So, um, Ali, you, you highlight, you highlighted uh, transportation finance um real estate um agriculture yeah uh, those are some of the uh, can you just touch a little bit like in, in in regards to like finance what are the opportunity in finance you you saw what well, you saw out here with some of yeah the i mean the common thing just and let me just speak to west africa and the places i've been but the common theme is there's a lot of incremental building um in Sierra Leone, right? You see homes with you know foundations completed, homes with uh you know roofs not on yet or, or or just not completely done in the interior. And that is primarily due to the lack of steady finance to finance these projects, right? Typically people are building with cash and they got the cash to build a foundation and then they build the rest of the house as they get money. And I think that is an area um that is wide open. Um, I know a lot of the banks in Sierra Leone and other West African countries have really low mortgage penetration rates, uh, meaning that most people have to rely on cash. And that presents the opportunity for a bank to come in and, and provide uh, financing at a, at, a, at a cheaper rate, um, at a longer amortization. I guess the, the biggest issue around that is, is with anything is making sure that you have secure title. Um, and that just seems to be an issue across the board. Um, and that also presents itself with an opportunity for a company that, you know, wants to provide title insurance. You know, that that alone, um, you know, will present a lot of money to any investor that decided to go that okay. route. The only issue is, is that you have to have, you know, people on the ground that really understand the process of, you know, transferring over deeds and making sure they secure title. But there's, 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 you know, tons of people that can do provide legal representation in that area. Yeah. Well, um, in that regard, I will have a question because that's something I'm, I'm more concerned about when it comes to that area, especially lending money and things like that. Yeah. Uh, especially for the, um, the inflation risk that is, um, uh, how yeah, someone can go around things like that, uh, especially. Mm -hmm. These people are more they have access to it, in the Leons, not the US dollar and things like that. Because the rate at which the inflation is rising in Sierra Leone is it's crazy. Um it's like 
<laughs> it's like crazy. So if a farm gives someone in the Sierra Leonean money about, let me see, uh, 100 million euros, maybe roughly, I'm not saying a what about, let me see, $10,000, just roughly. Next five years, never say that five years, I would say one year down the line, the way the rates, those things are going, it doesn't watch that ten thousand dollar anymore. Maybe it's about eight thousand dollars. So yeah. How, yeah. So how about that? How you know maybe someone can try to go a, a, around things like that because that's why I think most of those banks out there they are not doing those lending, and if they are doing the interest rates are like off the roof. Yeah, and that's what we're saying across the board. I mean, you look at you're looking at interest rates of, and I'm not sure exactly what the interest rates are in Sierra Leone, but I know in a place like Ghana, you're looking at interest rates 16, 70, 17% and up. And that's primarily just based on the monetary policy and what they have to do to contend with inflation. Yeah. Um, I don't see that going away anytime soon, um, but that presents an opportunity you know, for um, outside you know, financing, organized companies to come in and, and, and kind of take that risk. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, but there's opportunity to finance things on okay. the continent. I think manufacturing, agriculture are really low hanging fruit uh, when it comes to Sierra Leone. There's, there's no way that a country should be importing you know that much food on an annual basis when you have so much arable land available to you to grow yeah. everything. And to grow everything. The country yeah. has everything it needs to survive yeah. within its borders. Yeah, yeah, that's um, uh, of, but but that's the cause. That's one of the major cause of the inflation, because yeah. if you can produce most of the, the things you are using, that you're not going to be using the dollars you have to start buying stuff to import in the country. That's one main factor uh, why the inflation is so high. You know, because and, and everything. Hopefully. Huh? No, sorry, get. Yeah. So everything um, basically people are using over there, they have to import it. So, which is crazy. So, you're using all the dollars <laughs> you have over there to buy these things. So, uh, yeah. Which. And, that, and that's exactly what COVID has taught us is that, you know, you cannot completely rely on supply chain sometimes you know the whole yeah. world shut down and, and look what happened you and, know when yeah. you have things at a higher clip a higher amount so yeah. it, it, at least as far as food is concerned that should be grown locally controlled locally um by sierra leoneans yeah um yeah you you right that's one thing is one um i have to go but i think again in that regard I think government have to think about really got to change. Oh, let me see. Tweak the educational system back home. Got to have some program that teach people on entrepreneurship. You don't need to go to university. You can just get out of high school and have some kind of skill sets. You can go to any college, have those skill sets where you can learn some of those things to manufacture stuff. So that's another thing again. The skill set is not there. That's, that's it. Not all the money is not available. The skill sets, the skill sets are just not there because people are not trained. All people yeah. are trained to you go to school, have a degree that you're looking for a office job. Uh, those are the things. So I think the government have to focus on things like that and uh, invest money in education in that part and grow that sector and which will even um, help the economy. All this thing we're talking about inflation, those things can help um, bring inflation down. Yes, it's not only going to take the government <clears throat> to step in and, and kind of train people to to do the things that the country needs, but it's also going to take uh, the diaspora to come in and make those 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 key investments um, with the skills and the abilities that we have in the West to bring those things to the continent. And uh, you know, one thing I'll say, and I'll say it time and time and again, you know, I, I know a lot of people come to America because they see America as the land of opportunity. And in a lot of instances, that is true. Um, but for me, the real land of opportunity is the continent. 
I'll debate anybody on that any day of the week. The continent is the land of opportunity. Okay. And and nothing even comes close. Yeah, that that's that's true what you're saying to some extent in the diaspora. That's something for me I've always been advocating. And but there are a lot of stories with that. People have had a lot of bad stuff because let me tell you, every diaspora you see here, they all most of them want to do something back home. I have bad experience with people back home or even with the governments. You know, when you go over there, you want to establish things. People who work in government start asking you for so much, think that you have everything. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. and they have discouraged a lot of people. They come over there, they have to turn their back, say, you know what? I just can't do it. You understand? So that's why I'm saying governments, not only them providing it, but open the opportunity for people, not diaspora businesses and things like that. But in yeah. the educational sector, because almost uh yeah, private schools, and um, I know one of my, my uncle is working on a situation like that, having a school where you developing kids to have those skill sets, which is a good thing. Uh is is look at it work with uh, young girls you know because for him you look at it it's a huge gap between girls and boys in in africa whereas boys are mostly working bringing the money in girls are not skilled so they want to try how we can close that gap a little bit so he's focusing on that angle more yeah that that's that's amazing work um and to your point i think you know, you hear the stories of people, you know, wanting to invest in their home countries and, you know, sending money home and to get a home built that, that never quite gets built or something goes wrong along the process. And and that is the motivation of my partner company, Jumbo Mass. Yeah, Jumbo Mass. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of why I've established my company, Sankofa Capital, was really to uh, build trust. And if you can build trust with consumers, uh, not only will you make a, a decent profit, but um, people will continue to come back to you um, because you're a trusted brand. And that yeah. that is critical uh, if you want to be a successful company in West Africa. It's really the trust barrier. You know, yeah. how can you get people to trust that you're going to deliver the product that you say you're going to deliver? Yeah. Um, that That's a key component. Yes. So I would just want to add on that, what you just said, for the opportunity for anyone choosing, because the blueprints and Jobo Max they're using, it's just amazing. Whereas you have this product over there, and then I have to find a way to market it to folks in the diaspora. I'm just throwing this out there. Anyone have an opportunity and thinking about ideas, uh, you can use similar, that kind of templates. Another area I'm seeing it is, uh, health insurance if you can design a product for whoever is listening thinking so i'm just doing it you can decide this design a product whereas people in the diaspora will buy those health insurance pay on a monthly subscription for yeah family back home because most times people will tell you my the grandma is sick over there but they're lying but now people can pay for this insurance here they will pay so whenever they're sick they can just go and see the doctor or something like that that's a good product if someone is thinking along the line want to make some investment well, that would be a cool stuff you try to market it to folks in the diaspora they'll buy it for family members back home yeah and and to to to, to kind of go off what you just said i mean if you're an investor uh whether or not you're sierra leonean uh and you're looking for opportunity to grow um to, to find new markets uh and as many investors around the world are in search of yield in this inflationary environment where rates are going up um that place to find yield is on the continent specifically west africa um if you're not there um you are not serious about uh you know, operating in a global environment uh, which we are in the 21st century absolutely well said well said man that's it yeah <laughs> that's what i said uh, so um i would say um so in a nutshell how can you summarize the old trip um 
Wow. It's, um, I would say it's, it's quite overwhelming and, and mind blowing. And, and really that doesn't really speak to my experience. And the reason I say that, I mean, who, I, I never fathomed that I would be able to get a citizenship in another place, right? And to be able to get that in a place where I have ancestral ties to, um, you know, is is beautiful. And I, I love the opportunity that that provides, you know, me and my children and, and everybody around me. So uh, if, you know, you're a black American like me, you know, uh, I, I suggest definitely looking into West Africa, you know, for investment, um, or you know, if you're looking for a second passport, I, I think, you know, with this world economy, I think we we need to hedge our bets and have a, a, a second or third place where we can make investments as a citizen. So I, I would say look into that, um, you know, go to ancestry.com, take your ancestry tests, you know, maybe it comes up, maybe you, you belong to one of the 12 tribes see early on. For me, it was, you know, it was easy. I kind of knew that that was going to happen because my family on both sides are from the Carolinas. Um, okay. So, and if you know the history about Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone Carolinas, yeah. people were brought specifically from Sierra Leone to the Carolinas to grow rice. Most, yeah. Yeah. Most of the Mende people. Yeah. So for me, having that ancestry was a given, right? Um, but I mean, hey, I, I would go for it. Try it. You know, life's short. Yep. Why? See what happens. Good stuff. So, yeah. so when is the family going to visit? I don't know. You tell them all this thing about yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm planning on taking them to Ghana, Ghana. Um, this year. Oh, this year. Um, uh, oh, so well, it's Ghana first before Sierra Leone. Okay. Well, the reason that the project is the project in Ghana is tying me up. It's tying a lot of time up. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So for me, it's 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 really critical that I, I pay attention to that. Um, you know, making sure we deliver the best product we can um, a, a, as a company. So I, I might spend some time there this summer, but I'll probably get the children to Sierra Leone probably 2024, um, right. maybe in the springtime. But I'm telling you, once I take my, my children love the beach and, and the beaches we go to are typically in New Jersey and Delaware and okay. compared to the beach river number two, there's, <laughs> no, there's, there's no love with river number two. Eh? No <laughs> but once they see it, I don't think we have to do anything else but go there. Yeah, even that's why you have the fresh water and, and, and then the, the, the sea. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. So I've already told them about it. I mean, they're they're super excited um, about going. Uh, they're they're excited about the the chance to to get passports in a, in a new place. So um, yeah. So after I'm done with with Ghana, which is going to take up another year of my time, okay. uh, to the next project, um, which we haven't identified uh, where we're going to build um, as a company. Uh, it's probably likely going to still be in the Accra area, um, but we're we're open to to, to building where, wherever the consumers demand that we build a, a decent product. We'll build. Amazing, man! You guys are doing a great job. You know, you guys always inspired me. You know what you guys are. You guys, I know by origin, but the passion you guys are doing over there, it's it's amazing. I hope. Uh, more people in the diaspora have the courage. I know we've gone through a lot with family members and business back home. Mm -hmm. We just don't need to give up because whatever little we all can help to lift that continent. See, yeah. people like you guys are going, that should just motivate us and you know, that keep it going. Um, and pray for the bright future. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm very, very optimistic. Yeah, you know, because for me, I always tell people there's one thing I'm looking in Africa. That there are a few things. Technology, it's going up, it's growing. That's alone, it's gonna to help to evolve. And then look at the, the the entertainment industry, music. Look where it used to be before, look where it is now. It's a prime right. export right now. So 
we have some positive things about the continents, at least. Not on government side, because all those things I'm talking, it's about people doing, pushing their own stuff. So all of us with our skill sets we do have, I think it's time for us to put, <laughs> try to all try to do what we can do to lift the continent. Uh, I, I think you said it best. I think I'll, I'll leave off with that uh, yeah. on my end. So uh -huh. it's been a joy being here uh, with, with you, kind of discussing my experience in, in Salon. And, um, you know, once I take the children, maybe we'll we'll do another video or or, or actually once uh, once I do the next investment with the group. Sure. Um, and if, you know, uh, you know, my company decides to do some business uh, from a real estate perspective, and see early on i'll let you know about it and oh sure definitely definitely i'm always um welcome man love having this conversation and see we bring in value to people and also to people back home you know whatever way man you're always welcome my brother thank you